Hello, Kingdoms and Great and Spiritual Sickers on this last too great day. Life's just too great to be here. Because God says in James, to count it all the joy when you enter into multiple trials and tribulations. He will never place no more on you than you can bear. The enemy is always busy, set out to steal, kill, and destroy. But I highly have answered the call. Because many are called and few are chosen. And God has called me to set the captive free and to preach the poor to the gospel. And I've learned to uh, look towards the hill, hill which cometh my help. Because the mantle that God has draped upon my shoulder has not been an easy mantle to carry in this place. Because uh, it had not been for the Lord on my side, I would have been dead somewhere sleeping in my grave. Or somewhere walking around here out of my mind. But my, lo and behold, my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, saw me worthy for one more day just to get it right and to be his vessel here on earth in the name of Jesus. And I'm I'm grateful for that. God has uh, draped, my heart has been very heavy. I'm grateful for I'm grateful for the call. Um, I've wrestled with it for a very long time. And, and one of the things that God has charged me to do is to expose spiritual corruption and the... Uh, justice system, the corruption that's been plaguing our society and causing our society to be in such an uproar and, and to be all twisted in this place. Uh, at a very early age, I, not knowing and as I began to grow and live in life and got caught up in life and just sucked up in life and uh, enjoying the world and, and see that's how Satan operates. He put the most beautiful things before you and give you that very thing that you love just, just to keep you in his grace. And um, caught up in the world and lost my identity in Christ and who it is that God says in Jeremiah 29 and 11. I knew you before I, you was formed in your mother's womb, but I called you forth to prosper you and to set you before my nation. The nation has been led astray by the principality, the wickedness of this world, a man's heart and man's flesh. According to Ephesians 6, principalities, powers and rulers of this world, darkness and darkness rulership of this world. It is really truly moving across this land in the flesh. I glorify God for this opportunity. And I tried to do this video earlier and um, and guess what? Nowhere to be found. Whenever the truth is being birthed, the enemy is not happy because that's the reason why he's such of a heavy attack upon your life because he knows that you're that detrimental to the kingdom of hell. And um, as I was sitting here, you know, just been going through and mourning, and every time, you no, know, I mean, God help me in this place. Let me go to God in prayer. I praise you right now, Father. I thank you for this opportunity. I thank you for your love. I thank you for your grace and your mercy, Father. Father God, it's us, Lord, standing in the need of prayer down here, Father. Help us to return back onto our first true love, God, that we not chase out the many gods in this place. In the name of Jesus, God. As you heard Ishmael in the wilderness after the birthing of Hagar and the mistreatment that they received in the hands of the handmaid, God, we have been, been receiving mistreatment down here, God. And I pray that you will hear us be well and in the wilderness in the name of Jesus. As the children of Israel welled out in Egypt and you heard their cry, Father God, I pray as I stand in the gap right now, God, that you will hear our cry, Father, cry, Father God. For you said if I abide in you and you abide in me, that... That whatsoever we ask, it shall be given, Father God. And I'm just asking that your Holy Ghost anointing will fall fresh on this nation in the name of Jesus. That he who has an ear will hear what the Spirit of the living Lord is saying in this place, God. That you continue to uproot, Father God, and 
to expose that which is not of you in this land and that thy kingdom come, thy will be done here on this earth as it is in heaven, God, that we will begin to walk according to the word of God, Father God, that we will continue to begin to lay down our burdens at your feet, God, that we'll, we'll begin to pick up our cross and we'll begin to follow you, Christ Jesus, and that everything that has breath will begin to line up with you, God, for you are Lord of Lords and kings of kings, Father God, and you said that no sickness nor disease shall come now our dwelling, Father God, that we should not be afraid of the terror by night, nor the error that fly by day, God, that we abide under the shadows on the wings of the Almighty God. For you said many are called, but few are chosen, Father God, I pray that they hear the call, Father God, that they'll seek the light in the darkness, Father God, the light that sit up on the hill, that we will be that light in the name of Jesus, the salt of the earth, Father God. That true leadership will begin to stand in this place, God. I glorify your name in this place, Jesus. Forgive us for our sins, God. I stand in the gap for us right now, God. I'm not perfect, Jesus. But I met your goodness and your mercy, Father God. You said if I seek, then the door should be open. The I will find in the door. If I knock, then the door should be open. I come in the humblest manner I know how. Now I pray right now that my flesh decrease and that the spirit of the living Lord increase in this place. I praise God for this time and this opportunity. One in the spirit. One to stay a course. One to stay afloat of which, which what it is that God has uh, set before us. And one of the things that God had began to teach me and show me is that He'll show you a glimpse of his glory. Like the burning bush in the name of Jesus. When God called Moses and Moses was in the wilderness because Moses was not trying to go back in the name of Jesus. And he called Moses unto the burning bush. And at that very moment when God began to show me that burning bush, he said something as, as you're looking forth into me. Something has got to be burnt up in this place in the name of Jesus. the burning of within the natural in order to begin to see within the spirit the spiritual realm it's even like with Shadrach and the Meshach and the Bendigo when they were thrown into the fiery furnace it wasn't until they were thrown into the fiery furnace and it was turned up seven times hotter that the um, the guards looked in and they they saw the glory of God and the burning the burning of, of things around you in the name of Jesus I glorify God in this place and I truly believe that we are in a burning season and some things are being burned and some things are being uprooted and some things are being exposed in the name of Jesus. Just hardship is coming just so that you can be able to see the glimpse and the glory of God in this place in the name of Jesus. And I, and, and as I was going through God and growing in God and I began to see, I was like, well, wait a minute God, you just showed me some blessings and now here, here I am I'm, I'm engulfed with calamity he says delayed but not denied in this place in the name of Jesus, I glorify God help clarity come forth in the name of Jesus, exposing the corruption that is plaguing this land and in the name of Jesus, God has been talking to me and, and I've been drinking and eating out of Genesis about Sarah and her God and how you can prophesy um, prosperity and prosperity can be stolen by, in, by the enemy but God says that whenever destiny is prophesied over your life and he has spoken destiny over you he said it cannot be stolen away from you the only way that they can, the enemy can get is if you, if you fight in this place and you do not trust in the spirit of the living Lord you do not trust in the word that God has spoken over your life and you give it away in this place in the name of Jesus because he said his word should not return unto him for in the name of Jesus I glorify God in this place I thank you Holy Ghost speak Father and that clarity will go forth in this place Thank you, Jesus. So as I'm going through and trying to go higher in God and go higher in His Word, it seemed like I got to a place and I just hit a, a just a blank spot, bland, disconnected. I'm like, whoa, wait a minute, God, wait a minute, what's going on? Something ain't right. I'm not feeling right. Ain't nothing going. It's, it's not going right. I'm, I'm pressing every day. I'm pressing every day, but 
still out of the will, feel like out of the will and out of the presence of God in the name of Jesus. And God began to talk to me just last week about the wilderness. He said, you're wandering in the wilderness and you came to a place in, the, in a place in your life that they're not in relationship with me. They're not seeking me. They're calling out for everything in this place. They're wanting, they wanted me to rain down more to eat and they want more materialism. And then the more I rain down, the more they consume and the further away that they get from me in the name of Jesus. I go for God in this place. They're eating everything that they, they're eating everything that is unhealthy for them. They're eating nothing but a lot of junk. The word that is going for, it is nothing but drunk. Prosperity. Everybody's seeking out the prosperity in this place. I glorify God. I thank you, Jesus. Help me, Holy Ghost. It's so much that God has wanted to say to his people. So as I'm studying the text and I'm continuously hearing about her guard and I'm hearing about her guard and I'm and say rock and God began to speak to me. Not only did he speak to me about Hagar, how Hagar stood in representation of Sarah because God had already spoken a word of destiny over Abraham that out of his womb, the nation, would be, that he would be a father of the nation. And Abraham was looking around like, I don't know how. And that's how many of us is in this day and time. You know, when God began to speak things that's, that's, that's shifting our life out of the way of the ordinary of what it is that we're used to. We don't want to hear that. We don't want to hear that. We want to hear. We want to hear um, wealth in the name of Jesus. We want to hear that we're gonna have the biggest house and we're gonna have the most followers on the IG and all this. That's not even healthy for your soul. And the very thing that you're asking for is the very thing that's causing calamity and misery in your life. So as God began to speak over Abraham and He told you're gonna be a father of nations and, and Sarah is listening in the background and and giggling and laughing and, and God began to speak to me. He says um, out of John, he came into the world and he was the world and the world knew him not. The very thing that he created is that he created man. You do not even know your creator in the name of Jesus. But that's the natural forces of us to rebel against that which what created us because child rebel against their parents every single day. I am a mother so I know how the rebellion of a child is in this place because we were born into sin in the name of Jesus and Satan set out to uproot that which what it is that God has spoken over your life in this place to give you his death, his his way of living so that his kingdom can be built here on earth because when Satan was hewn out of heaven he gained dominion over the earth in the name of Jesus and before he was hewn out of heaven and before the war broke out he saw the woman with child and the child was in his belly and he, he didn't want just he didn't want to sit on the throne he wanted to destroy Jesus because Jesus was going to be the savior of man in this place in the name of Jesus and Satan knew that he could not possess that which what was promised over man in the name of Jesus. So when Satan was hewn down out of out of heaven in the name of Jesus, he made he vowed to make war against the children of God to show that they're not worthy to be in the presence of God. And we have been getting the snot knocked out of us in the name of Jesus. But God said He sent His Son, His only begotten Son, that whosoever should believe him shall be saved and have eternal life by the blood of Jesus because the blood I thank God for the blood that has been shed across and over the nation for every soul in this place I glorify God so guys God began to speak to me he, he began to show me he said I'm going to show you in, in the text where the prophetic of destiny was birthed in Genesis with her guard Sarah knew that she could not bear a child. Her womb was restrained. That I means when it's restrained, I mean it's just held up. It's nothing that it cannot be broken in this place in the name of Jesus. So Sarah gave her God, her handmaid, to Abraham. Now for a long time I wrestled with that because you know it's out of line of out of marriage. But God said the reason why he allowed it because Sarah the wife she allowed it. Now God is not pleased with men stepping out of their marriage but this was allowed to birth destiny into into manifestation in the name of jesus because god had already spoken it. and see even abram them was in the presence of the spirit of the living lord they wasn't talking to 
the Holy Ghost. They was talking to this God Himself, who has said, "Let there be light in the name of Jesus." And they did. They still didn't even know Jesus. They still didn't even believe in the word that God had spoken over their life. Because the only thing they said is, "How in the name of Jesus?" And a lot of us are looking around and we look like, "Like how in the world is this going to happen?" This this so-called glorious vision that I see that God has birthed into my spirit. How in the name of Jesus? So God touched Hagar's womb and and she conceived in the name of Jesus and came Ishmael. So God is already saying, say, Ron, look, if you just look at what I've said and you trust in me, have faith in me, because you walk by faith and not by sight. You already have birthed this child into destiny in the name of Jesus. You already have had your child in the name of Jesus. I glorify God in this place. But within that one year that Abram, Sarah's womb, was held up and strained. There was so much that Abram had to go through. He had to go through. And what God began to show me before Sarah could give birth, Abraham blessed two other lineages before his house was blessed in the name of Jesus. And he went and he stood as an intercessory reward and interceded for on behalf of his family in the name of Jesus. So that is letting God know that I am capable of being the man that I'm capable of handling and standing in the gap for whenever hard times come for my child and I will go forth and I will war for my child in the name of Jesus because a lot of daughters gave birth to the the children of Moabites and the clan of Ammonites who later on whenever they continued to travel and went into the land of Paran and um, Mor Mora um, the tabernacle tree, which means God is a teacher. Whenever they passed through those lands, that was the land of his descendants in which Hagar had given birth to in the name of Jesus. So Hagar had to give birth to Ishmael first to go forth before uh, Isaac to set up in the land in which the land it had became their spiritual inheritance in the name of Jesus. I glorify God in this place. And what God began to speak to me about the calamity and all the hardship that is happening in this land. And God began to say, he began to took me over to building a temple because God has always looked for a temple in this in this physical land right now in this 21st century. A temple to where he can dwell, where his Holy Ghost can come and speak to his people and, and um, God his people in the name of Jesus. And in the building of the temple, if you go study the text of First Kings seven twenty one in the name of Jesus. The building they had two pillars, two pillars which mean just sin, um, astrology, uh, tarot reading, and Boaz, which is the Freemasonry. The Freemasonry side society uh, eventually eventually derived into the Illuminati in the name of Jesus. See, we have an enemy. Not only do we have a spiritual enemy, we have a physical enemy in the name of Jesus. And that physical enemy comes out of envy and jealousy, whom the Satan has sent forth to steal, kill, and destroy in the name of Jesus. And even her guard, Ishmael, as he was being birthed, he even was faced with death in the name of Jesus. But God says, get up, because I have spoken the word over you, and you shall go forth and be a great nation. So whenever God speaks something over you, trust me, his word shall not return unto him, boy, in the name of Jesus. And just come when God began to speak to me about all that and right now where I am in life. And God began to say, you had to go through it. He says to count it all joy whenever you enter into multiple trials and tribulations. Because how can you go forth in my power and in my word if you have not been through it yourself? To go to set the captive free and to preach the poor, preach the gospel unto the poor. And he said, so I had to allow you to go to it, through it so that you can see what it is that man is going through in this world. Because I'm looking around, I'm like, God, this cannot be so. Something is not right in this place. Because I know what your word says, but it is so far, far from it in the land. What is going on? This is, I go in Christ and I'm, I need to know what is going on. Help me break this. What it is that needs to be uprooted out of my life. And when you begin to break generational curses. I tell you what. It goes so far back. To the point to where you you going back into you to your grandparents, grandparents' lineage in the name of Jesus. And it's like, how can that be so? Biblical text, it will be so. And by the option of the spirit of the living Lord. So I'm praying and, and God began to say to me. 
Let's look at the text. We're going back to when Dr. Martin Luther King was assassinated April 4th, 1968. In the name of Jesus, I glorify God in this place. Thank you, Holy Ghost. And he says, Highland, they've been stealing ever since. Ever since the assassination of Dr. Martin Luther King, because what they thought was, he says, they looked out over the glory, and that's about like with Abraham and Sarah and Hagar, the glory that was set over his life. Because Abraham just could not walk into that land of flowing with milk and honey. He had to war over it because of the glory and the anointing that rested upon his life. And whenever Sarah looked at her God, she saw that her God had given birth was something that she wanted. It brought rage in her and she began to mistreat her people, her, her, her own people in the name of Jesus. She went against her very word and began to basically war with herself in the name of Jesus. I glorify God in this place. And we have, we are somewhat like the Hagar handmaid that has been handed over in the name of Jesus. It gets out of the will of God and we have been mistreated. And as we, in this dwelling, is dwelling, is going up before God in, out of the wilderness. We are in our wilderness moment and we're willing not before God. God has been speaking so profoundly, but we're missing Him because we want to see Him in the natural, materialistic way. And we're not looking at it in the right, right eye. And I just want to say this because God had birthed this out of my last one. Um, as I begin to walk in Christ and I'm born in Christ and I'm loving Christ and the ways of the world and I used to live the way I used to live, I just didn't want to live like that no more. I, I began to um, feel very nasty going to, I felt unclean going into God's presence. So I one day I just dropped down to my knees. I said, God, if you just help me and you give me the strength to walk in celibacy and to cut this, this ways of this world out, I promise you I will not have lay another man in my bed until you bring him to me. And so, as I began to grow in that, I had to begin to guard my eye gate. I had to begin to guard my ear gates. I cannot allow myself to see anything to walk in purity before Christ Jesus. And I began to feel the, so, the harmony of peace and, I mean, un, unspeakable joy and peace in my life. And I just, I, I, it was so grand. I just cannot believe that I was having this in this world. So, I know that it is possible in this place. So, and... Whenever I begin to be engulfed with so much calamity and so much hardship, and I'm like, wait a minute, something ain't right. God says it's like a transference of power. Hallelujah. Praise God. Um, made the vow to God that uh, you can't just be tangled up in any own um, and everything. Whenever destiny has been spoken over you, bring it back to my remembrance, Holy Ghost. I glorify God in this place. And as God began, I'm like, well, God is kind of a little bit out. But God began to tie it in with her guard and Dr. Martin Luther King and and the pillars and the tarot card reading. This past weekend, I was just in golf. One minute, everything's okay. And I'm lining up and I'm trying to consume this new area, new place in life and and uh, get myself organized because I've been very disorganized. And, just out, just feeling out the will in my mind. And uh, confusion did not work in him. And just instantly, I was just involved and I was taken out of the plan that I had. Help me, Holy Ghost. And I had to come push to the hospital to see about my grandson, who's the anointing that is upon his life. It was a spiritual attack. But as I was driving down the road to get to the hospital, occasionally I just peers up at I just peered up at the sky, and not the sky. It's like whoa, because I'm riding, and at the corner of my eye, I literally saw a whole image. I was like whoa, wait a minute. So I pulled over, and I began to snap photos. But God's like, what you see, they won't see because of the work of the flesh. And He said that's another reason why you're feeling so out. And so bland because they know the anointing. They there's people that know that this anointing is upon your life, and the spiritual gifts is upon your life. And you got some that's wanting for uh, one one week. You got some that's wanting for another. And you got some that 
they want to use it for divine nation. They want to see the future and they want to they want to call for us prosperity and they're using it for all different kinds of things. I'm like, God, I can't see what is, what's going on at that very moment. I saw the image in the sky. I literally saw, I said, whoa, wait a minute. The image that they that's described in Revelation is the glory in the face of God. In the name of God, I said, whoa, wait a minute. I got to wait a minute. So I pulled over. And I began to snap pictures, and one of the images that I saw, I saw a blanket draped over this person. It's like an image, like in the, in the image, I saw the image holding a child. So I'm like, okay, not even paying no attention because I haven't even got to the hospital. So, so as I began to, um, so riding down the road, hadn't even got to the hospital yet, and, um, I saw the image of the draping of the person and the baby. So I got to the hospital and um, sent about my grandbaby and you no know, time went on and we ended up having to lay down and go to sleep and he had his bed and I had the sofa. And not even realizing at the moment, we laid on the sofa and I huddled him all night. As I prayed over and I cuddled him all night on the sofa. So the next day as I got up and um, began to move around Cause I was just very slugs. I've been real slugs. I have not been able to get up and move like I usually was supposed to move, and just a real soft of spirit. And um, I just remember God says, "Look back at the photo." And remember, I just held him in my arm all night long. In the very way that I held him in my arm all night long, I could see that image in this photo, and I'm like, "Whoa, wait!" He says, "Your grandchild is covered in the name of Jesus, God." They meant it for evil, but God meant it for his good. The anointing that arrests upon his life. Um, he has a, and you have been called to oversee him and to watch out over him. And I began to study, um, and as I began to study do my, um, even study, I was like, I've like been doing bits and pieces of study, not even been able to really focus on my words of God. I, God took me into Leviticus. Uh, nine, you know, Leviticus ten and eight, and it says, "Then the Lord spoke to Aaron, saying, Do not drink wine or intoxicating drink. You nor your sons with you.' And I did not get to see that with you and your sons. God said, I, I looked down at my grandbaby. He said, That is your son." In the name of Jesus, said, your son Jim that is in college, that is your grandson, that is him. He has, he is 22 years old in college. In the name of Jesus, that's the prophetic word that God spoke over him right there in that very moment. And not only did God speak that prophetic word over my grandson, he said, so what you do right now, you will birth it into his line. I said, oh, Lord, oh, no, I don't want to know because I've been feeling overwhelmed and I had not drank anything since New Year's Eve. And on New Year's Eve, I did. I drank two glasses of wine. I used the scripture saying that um, I, wine is for goodness for the infirmities of your stomach. But even with that, when I woke up the next day, January 1st, I did not feel right. I felt bewildered in my mind. I was like, wait a minute, something ain't right. This is very odd for me to feel like this off of two glasses of wine. And as I began to come down off of that wine drunkenness, even into the next day, God began to speak into my spirit. And he said, you was you were about to become a dumb alcoholic and you were going to have a psychological mental attack in this place later on if you, if you had or you continue to consume alcohol. I've called you to walk a lifestyle of holiness and purity. And I'm like, wow, I won't drink no more. And I haven't. And uh, until I see my grandson going through this and the enemy is just coming in like a flood. And, and I'm like, wait a minute, say, you can't have, you know, you're not finna do this to my grandson. And I was like, you know what, I got to have me a drink. And God brought me to that text. See, whenever God has a prophetic word of destiny over you, He'll guide you. He'll make quicker paths straight. And He will not lead you straight in the regardless of how many blame you feel. And you feel like you're not hearing from the Spirit of the living God. It's just a moment of testing, trials and tribulations. And God says to count it all joy. So, with that moment and Him going through it, and God says, I had to allow you to go through it. So, in order for you to be able to speak, and to break the power off of the enemy and break the curse 
that has happened, you have to go through it in order for you to see what's going through. What well, what's going on in society and the calamity and why this is not a coincidence. Satan has set his kingdom up on this in this on this earth by through man. The works of the flesh of man. Galatians 5 and 9. Sexual immorality has been using people through principality, spiritual wickedness, and powers of this world and rules of darkness of this world. Principalities cannot operate without spiritual wickedness because it's spiritual wickedness actually give empowerment to the government which is the principalities because God says in Isaiah 61 and 1 the chastisement of the government was upon Jesus' shoulders. So the ministers of the gospels really is the one who's supposed to operate in biblical law, leadership, and government position over the land. But they sold their position of power away. And the very, it's been happening since the foundation of time. We have been free, but really not free. Um, ever since they signed the uh, Emancipation Proclamation. People have been selling themselves back into the hands of their slave master and they're still being the house boys of this land because they're afraid to live and, and didn't know how to make ends meet and did not know how to provide for their families to eat. So whenever Dr. Martin Luther King died in the name of Jesus, glorify me. Thank you, God. Now let me move ahead. But at that moment when God spoke over my grandson about my grandson, he says, that's what the pillars and the Freemasonry and the Illuminati come in. And he says what they're doing, he said they're using tarot card reading and medium psychics to look into the future of people leadership. And when God began to speak to me about Dr. Martin Luther King and how we have never been free, we have became a systematic system of enslavement. If you got a social security number, you're tagged. And God said... When Dr. King died, when Dr. King, when the anointing that was spoken and put over his life to lead the nation, whenever they was in D.C. at the Capitol, and they looked out and they saw the mass crowd over uh, that that draw, in the name of Jesus, thank you, Holy Ghost, that draw forth to hear from Dr. King. And the Latter-day Church has already been birthed. They think that they can stop the Latter-day Church. But whenever Dr. King stood before that mass of people at the Capitol in Washington, D.C., that was the Latter-day Church. As Isaiah 2 and 2 says that every man will flock unto the mountains to hear the word of the Lord. And, and whenever Dr. King stood at the Capitol, that, that was the birthing of it. Even though they took his life, the slaughtering of him came about. So... In the name of Jesus, give it to me, Holy Ghost. You want to live? God says, the enemy, Satan, saw that power. Just like Satan saw the power of the woman with child and Jesus being birthed, the leader of the nation. He sought out to kill him in the name of Jesus. So whenever Dr. King was assassinated, Satan thought that he had stolen destiny in the name of Jesus. But it had to happen. They meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. Because the enemy, the jealousy of man in this land saw the anointing. And they said that that's too much power for one man to have. And ever since Dr. King was assassinated, they have been stealing from their, from Dr. King's lineage. And Dr. King's people, the other other leaderships of this world, Malcolm X, Malcolm X of this world. In the name of Jesus, they have been stealing from their lineage and giving it to their lineage. This, this principalities that's sitting in the position of government right now, they stolen all they stolen generation after generation after generation in the name of Jesus and God says this this is no coincidence it was set up, he said now look at it he said sit for a minute, and even when he's sitting for a minute trying to pray, I cannot the heavy spirit of distraction that has been so heavy on me to keep me from going into the spiritual realm and discerning what is going on to actually pray effectively over what's happening but anytime you commit your hand, your spirit into God's hand, God will cover you. You truly abide under the shadows, under the wings of Almighty. And I'm in that place right now because God is exposing some stuff. And it's been a, a mental attack sent out over my life to dismantle me, to keep from speaking prophetic and breaking those generation curses that Satan has set up across this land in the name of Jesus. And that's when the Illuminati began to ring out in my ears. Just this past week, he said, the Illuminati, the, fr the Freemason there that was from the B.C. time has grew wicked and vicious over time. And the, what they have been doing is the principalities, they take the principalities and they pay 
out of your mind and they pay the spiritual wickedness, the church leaders, they pay them and they pay these so-called TV reality stars money just to sabotage your life. He said this is not a coincidence. They sabot they set this up so that they can conform your schedule and your life around their, their life to draw prosperity to them because your lineage has you are the lineage of the kings. You are a lineage who is supposed to go forth in the power of God. And they see that a warning upon your life. And not only have they touched your life, but they have touched your kids' life as well. In the name of Jesus, I glorify God in this way. These are not my words. If you study the text, how God, Genesis 16, on up uh, to 19, and Leviticus 9, and 1 Kings 7, 721, the building of the temple. All over the place, of course. You can look out in society and you can see that calamity is happening. Everybody is asking, why? God says, you're not waiting for change. You are the change. You are the solution. If people just wake up, you have people that have sold in the systematic system of enslavement and we have been a part of it since the beginning of time. Ever since Abraham Lincoln so called signed it and said that we was free, we have never been free in the name of Jesus because somebody in our lineage has sold us out with the Illuminati blood sacrifice. They, you have people who have learned biblical knowledge um, taken false doctrine and used it to conform the ways of this world, the secret society, that's what they do, they, they say that they make decisions for people whenever they feel like society is not going the right way, no, you make society decisions for you to make the world conform around your life, the rich is getting richer, and the poor is getting poorer, because the rich is still in front of the poor, in the name of Jesus, I glorify God in this place, and when God began to show me that these theologians, these so-called leaders of the land, these so-called leaders of the land, what they have been doing, they have turned us into the herd of swine. They have learned how to cast their burdens upon us. So therefore, that's the reason why they always, they're cloning and they always want you to have a prayer partner because they they take their mis mishap and their misfortune and they're placing it upon your shoulder. But what God began to show me is why they have so much um nervous breakdown. They have a nervous breakdown right now. They have an anxiety right now. They're stressed out about financial burdens right now because they're living a lifestyle that they cannot afford. A lifestyle that they have stolen their way into and they're not supposed to be in that position. So guess what has happened? You meant it for evil, but God meant it for our good. And the seeds that you have sown, it is coming back to you like a boomerang. The ditch that you have dug, you, you, you yourself have fallen into it because the enemy has sunk mental distress on you. The enemy has sunk depression on you. The enemy has sunk a spirit of suicide on you. The enemy has sunk everything that you're getting that you're stealing from those whom you should not be. Ye touch not my anointing and do my prophet no harm. God that is flowing through your hands just like butter and water. You will not hold it. You will not keep it. It is cursed at the root. And until the world society begins to conform to what it is that God has spoken and true leadership is put back into place, it will continue to do that. What God began to show me also, what God began to show me, he showed me that everything had been halted because the secret society of human and spiritual wickedness in high places have got blood on their hands. They have slaughtered innocent lives and that blood is crying out from the earth and at this particular moment them people that they have in leadership like the Dr. Kings and the Malcolm X they had an appointed destiny for 2022 and so until we go over that and stuff begin to fall into place which is what God had intended for it to be it has been a standstill in in society in the world today because those leaderships that, that they had assassinated had a destiny and appointed time right now and God has got to got to look kind of clockwise and it has to move around it and begin to pull those up and put people in position that's supposed to be in position right now for such a time as this but God began to tell me to go on and let them know it's not a coincidence you have became a herd of swine for the Illuminati and the principality which is the government and these these um so-called fake it till you make it because whenever I had begun to go into the beauty industry and um, learn to do hair, the first thing they said is 
the thing that we teach over here, you better fake it until you make it. And they, they have not made it and they still faking it. But they give you that option that they are so wealthy, they are so rich, they are so happy, and they are miserable, and they are lying out their teeth, and they have stolen all the millions of followers that they have, they done stole from at least half of them. That's the reason why you have so much calamity is happening in your life, but the devil is a lie. Um, I will not harbor the misfortune and the burden of somebody that's caught up in sin and, and won't lay down, lay their burdens down. They love misery in their flesh so much that they allowed it, this stuff happen. And not only they allow it to happen to them, they have chosen you as their blood sacrifice. And that's where we are in this day and time. I'm praying that this, this recording took uh, uh, will go forth for my spiritual king's king seekers. I'm grateful for my few followers. So God says, if you be faithful over a few things, I'll make you ruler over me. And to count it all joy, just go through it because you're not going through it for some for yourself. You're going through it for somebody else. Like God told me last week, He said it's not about you, boy. It is so not about you. I called you for to open blind eyes. To lay hands on the sick, to go out to the highways and the byways and make disciples and, and to be my missionary and to be my evangelist, 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 not evangelist, evangelist is inside teaching. But God has called some people for You may not be an apostle, you may not be a prophet, but he's called you to be a vessel, to be used, to build him a temple to where he can use and speak and be heard effectively. And a lot of folks um, teach you're not supposed to. The reason why they don't they teach that because they don't want you to do it because they're doing it. Astrology and um, Freemasonry the Illuminati is supposed to sit under the option and the anointing of God. And it is very real and I pressed all of it until I began to seek God in His Word and I began to see God speak to me about the Illuminati and um to speak to me, they have turned turned from their way. They have not. They not. They don't have the biblical foundation. And the ones that do have a biblical foundation, they have gotten their own assumption and their own um, thoughts of what the Bible is saying. And the Bible is plain and pure. I got a study Bible, King James Bible. I got a, uh, a New King James Bible, a, a study warfare Bible. I have a women's Bible. I got whatever Bible I need to understand what what this says the Lord. To me. Who was God is trying to say to me in this hour because I met him along my way. I've saw that great light three times in my life. And each time the light was coming to save me. It ain't like uh, the poltergeist movie. Don't step no, you better step into this light, Carolyn, because if you don't, you to be walking the eternal of darkness with the gnashing and gnashing of teeth. And oh Lord, I don't want to feel that in this place. But God is good. God is awesome. And you're going through some eyes is beginning to be open. So people are laying some things down. But God what God began to drop in my spirit. He says that he said they hear me and they're coming out, but they are surrounded around uh, a spirit of deception. Uh, and evil always comes before good. In order for you to be able to know what it is and to be able to walk in discernment and to see who God is effectively, you have to, everybody's going to meet that burning bush whenever God has called you into um, to walk in your anointing on the life on this life's too grand Sunday spiritual king spiritual seekers kingdom sin breathing spiritual seekers that's what I'm trying to say y'all have a life's too grand day. Life is just too grand to be bitter. And just know, you just have to find somebody that's, that's able to pray over you effectively to be able to know how to war for you on your behalf in the spirit. Because everything that I tell you, it is real. I've walked through it. I've been delivered through it. And I am being delivered through it. And I'm learning how to speak according to what thus says the Lord. To set the captive free and to preach the poor, preach the gospel to the poor. Y'all have a life too grand day.